At the age of 19, the day after I graduated high school, I moved to a place where it snowed, and I became a massage therapist. With this job, all I needed were my hands and my massage table by my side, and I could go anywhere. For the first time in my life, I felt free, independent, and completely in control of my life. That is, until my life took a detour. I went home from work early one day with what I thought was the flu, and less than 24 hours later, I was in the hospital on life support with less than a 2% chance of living. It wasn't until days later, as I lay in a coma, that the doctors diagnosed me with bacterial meningitis, a vaccine-preventable blood infection. Over the course of two and a half months, I lost my spleen, my kidneys, the hearing in my left ear, and both of my legs below the knee. When my parents wheeled me out of the hospital, I felt like I had been pieced back together like a patchwork doll. I thought the worst was over until weeks later when I saw my new legs for the first time. The calves were bulky blocks of metal with pipes bolted together for the ankles and a yellow rubber foot with the raised rubber line from the toe to the ankle to look like a vein. I didn't know what to expect, but I wasn't expecting that. With my mom by my side and tears streaming down our faces, I strapped on these chunky legs <laughs> and I stood up. They were so painful and so confining that all I could think was, how am I ever going to travel the world in these things? How was I ever going to live the life full of adventure and stories as I always wanted? And how was I going to snowboard again? That day, I went home, I crawled into bed, and this is what my life looked like for the next few months. Me passed out, escaping from reality, with my legs resting by my side. I was absolutely, physically, and emotionally broken. But I knew that in order to move forward, I had to let go of the old Amy and learn to embrace the new Amy. And that is when it dawned on me that I didn't have to be five foot five anymore. I could be as tall as I wanted. <laughs> or as short as I wanted, depending on who I was dating. And if I snowboarded again, my feet aren't going to get cold. And best of all, I thought, I can make my feet the size of all the shoes that are on the sales rack. <laughs> and I did. So there were benefits here. <laughs> it was this moment that I asked myself that life-defining question. If my life were a book and I were the author, how would I want this story to go? And I began to daydream. I daydreamed like I did as a little girl. And I imagined myself walking gracefully, helping other people through my journey, and snowboarding again. And I didn't just see myself carving down a mountain of powder. I could actually feel it. I could feel the wind against my face and the beat of my racing heart as if it were happening in that very moment. And that is when a new chapter in my life began. Four months later, I was back up on a snowboard, although things didn't go quite as expected. My knees and my ankles wouldn't bend, and at one point, 
I traumatized all the skiers on the chairlift when I, <laughs> I fell and my legs still attached to my snowboard <laughs> went flying down the mountain. <laughs> and I was on top of the mountain still. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was just as shocked as everybody else. And I was so discouraged. But I knew that if I could find the right pair of feet, that I would be able to do this again. And this is when I learned that our borders and our obstacles can only do two things. One, stop us in our tracks. Or two, force us to get creative. I did a year of research, still couldn't figure out what kind of legs to use, couldn't find any resources that could help me. So I decided to make a pair myself. My leg maker and I put random parts together, and we made a pair of feet that I could snowboard in. As you can see, rusted bolts, <laughs> rubber, wood, and neon pink duct tape. And yes, I can change my toenail polish. <laughs> it was these legs and the best 21st birthday gift I could ever receive, a new kidney from my dad, that allowed me to follow my dreams again. I started snowboarding, then I went back to work, then I went back to school, then in 2005, I co-founded a nonprofit organization for youth and young adults with physical disabilities so they could get involved with action sports. From there, I had the opportunity to go to South Africa, where I helped to put shoes on thousands of children's feet so they could attend school. And just this past February, I won two back-to-back -back World Cup gold medals. Thank you. <laughs>